just us checking in. I'm just editing this video and it's super, super long. So there's not too much about Len and herself. It's a lot of the story of how I got her. So um, there will be vlogs and stuff that'll show lots about her. This is just the story of her. So I hope you guys enjoy it. And I'm so sorry that some of it's out of focus. It's so annoying and I really need to figure it out or get a new camera or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> deep bark for her like you wouldn't expect her to have such a deep bark we're working on not barking he said oh you're such a good girl Lennon, can you stay here can you stay here stay here for a little bit um if you can't tell i am a mom and i have never been so happy in my life ever ever it's been a dream of mine for my entire life to be able to rescue a dog and i finally did and i feel the luckiest person in the entire world because she is perfect and I don't say that lightly. This is the most excited I've ever been to film a video, to share news, anything um, because yeah rescuing a dog has been a dream of mine ever since I can remember. So my family dog Pippi, which you probably all know if you watch my channel or follow me on Instagram, she is also the love of my life and she is wonderful in every single way. So we got my family dog when I was about six years old and 16 years ago, rescuing wasn't as you know common knowledge. People didn't know as much about it. Uh, specifically my family didn't know about it and I was six years old so I couldn't have been like, I don't know. I, I didn't know what was going on, I was six years old. But yeah, growing up and learning about rescuing and how many dogs need help uh, versus how terrible breeders and puppy mills are. It's always been a dream of mine to rescue as many dogs as I can and more importantly, you know, the dogs I do rescue, rescue give them like the best life I can. So it's been a six month process, half a year of trying to get a dog and let's start from the beginning of the story of how I got Lennon. And there is some confusion, there has been some confusion because I posted on Instagram a photo of her and I totally understand why there's confusion. But I talked about getting a dog from Thailand um, in a couple videos ago, and I've mentioned it since, you know, talking about how my rescue dog's coming. This is a different dog, just to clarify. She is not the one from Thailand. That one is still, let in. No. That one is still debatably in the process. Um, we don't know if we're gonna get her yet, 100%. I'll explain everything. Um, but yeah, just to clarify, this is a dog from a Toronto um, rescue place. She's originally from Mexico. We'll go on a walk soon, I promise. When I started this whole process, I of course still lived at home. So it was kind of up to my parents um, is if I was able to get one because it is their home. And they always said no. <laughs> and it, was, it fucking sucked. And then during COVID and everything, my mental health got worse. And it was to the point where I needed a dog. Um, of course I have Pippi, but I need a, like emotional support. My dog versus like a family dog. Pippi is not, I don't know. She, <laughs> if I cry, she'll leave a room. Like I need a dog who's gonna really cheer me up and dogs are proven to really improve anxiety, depression, mood, everything. I was doing really badly one day and I texted my parents being like, you know what, it's happening. I'm getting a rescue dog. I need it, I need it. And I was expecting, to, you know put up a fight and for them to push back and for it to be this whole thing but they replied they were at the cottage so they texted me back being like you know we've talked about it and i really think it'd be good for you and i think you should do it and i was just like what what like i was in shock like i could not believe it obviously i was so happy i've never been so excited so of course i'm like okay i'm gonna start looking right now and that's what i did i looked everywhere and this was like the heat of covid like when quarantine was going on and there were so many dogs 
taken from the shelters. And I knew that I was gonna move out with Ben eventually, and that I would need a dog who's okay in an apartment, a dog who's under a certain weight so that they can come with me everywhere, fly with me. Most importantly, good in an apartment, because I knew that I would have been moving out. But yeah, so there were not that many dogs left in Canada, unfortunately. Uh, I tried. I really did. I've gotten comments being like, of course you want to go overseas and get the perfect dog. Absolutely not. That's not the case. I have applied for many different types, types of dogs, ones who need surgeries, one who have special needs, all that stuff. Uh, so that was not the case. It was not about getting, you know, a pretty dog or anything. It was about getting the best match for me because that's only what's fair to the dog as well. It's dodgy. I don't recommend going on Kijiji in general. There's always puppies there getting sold for $4,000. And you know, once in a while there's a rehome, which is okay, but I really suggest going through a rescue. It takes longer, the process can be a bit grueling, but it's the responsible thing to do. But when I went, there was an ad for adopt a Thailand stray dog. And I was like, oh my God, this is right up my alley. Like I wanted to make sure it wasn't just like a rehome or someone trying to grab money. It was like a stray dog from Thailand, a rescue. So I was like, oh my goodness. So I reached out to her and it wasn't on Kijiji. Like they weren't for sale on Kijiji, it was just an ad. So I emailed her, she had a website, um, this woman, like a full, it was just an ad on Kijiji. Anyways, um, she had a website with some of the pups uh, listed and I fell in love with this one. I got um, talking to her and she, it's a very confusing story. Um, it's very hard to explain to people. That's why another reason why I'm doing a video, I'm like, this is what happened. I don't want to explain it anymore because it's been literally half a year of explaining to people. So she's from New Zealand, but she's lived in the States. She's lived in Thailand. She's lived in Canada where she lives now. So she lives in Canada. So what she's doing is she has good relationships with a lot of Thai rescues and Thai locals and uh, people who live there who take care of dogs. And what she was trying to do was try to get connected Canadians to adopt these dogs to help um, get some strays out of the hands of the rescues and the people because you know every dog is very expensive to take care of so yeah she just wanted to match up good responsible owners in Canada and helping out rescues like small rescues and people in Thailand so the dog I wanted was being taken care of a guy who's also from New Zealand but lives in Thailand and he uh, has 27 dogs in his one bedroom apartment because he loves dogs so much he pays everything out of his own pocket they never asked me for a dime you know the first thing you think of is like oh they're just it's a money thing they just want um, your money like it's not a legitimate thing but no there she is verified as a like uh, rescue in the states uh, which makes made it all confusing anyways there's a million logistics I'm not gonna go into everything it's boring it has been a nightmare I would see photos and videos of her and just bawl my eyes out every day because I couldn't get her over here because the flight from Thailand is fucking long it's like over a day so with COVID and everything and all the restrictions and rules it just wasn't working I tried everything I was like cost is not an issue I don't care just get her over here there was literally no way there still is no way to get her over here she was the dog I was referring to in all the videos and the dog that everyone thinks is Lennon <laughs> because like to be fair I said I was getting a dog from Thailand but yeah when I got messages from this woman being like you know and we talk constantly like on the phone or whatever like even about random stuff but she was like there's no way you're getting her before Christmas this has been half a year like that's a long fucking time to wait for a dog and she was like I'm surprised you didn't bail sooner like <laughs> you're clearly a crazy dog lady too and I'm like yeah um, I was really set on this dog but still I was miserable living without a dog especially since moving out with Ben I don't have even Pippi here and I'm the type of person like I was born to be with animals like not even humans like animals are my calling and it was just getting very um, depressing and upsetting so my parents at the end of the day we were like okay get a dog in the meantime and then you know we'll figure it out so <laughs> before I tell the story of how I got Lennon I might have two dogs eventually I don't know what's happening in Thailand I don't know when she'll be here all I know is that she's safe and she's loved taking care of um, obviously it's not the ideal situation but it's better than her being on the streets um, and there's unfortunately nothing I can do about it I have tried everything but it's just been a whole mess and it was a nightmare and very emotionally jarring and draining and sad um, but anyway so then I started getting looking on to getting another dog I started looking at um, Toronto rescues and 
there was this one called Niagara Rescue or Niagara Dog. Okay, hi, it's Annika editing this and I realized that I literally babbled for so long about my experience with rescuing and the different rescues. So I'm just going to sum it up because it was freaking long and I don't want this video to be 40 minutes. So basically I applied for a special needs dog from a Niagara rescue. I applied for dogs in Alberta. It didn't work out. I applied for dogs in Turks and Caicos. They didn't get back for me. I was willing to fly out and get them. Um, basically it was just a huge shit show. It was really emotional, really heartbreaking. Anyways, I'm going to jump to the rest of the story that involves meeting basically Lennon um, before all this rescue shit. So this is when I still thought I was getting a Thai dog, okay? So I'm jumping back to when I thought I was getting the Thai dog and I see Lennon. Okay, go. Ben and I were in Rosedale, it's an area in Toronto, when we were getting a sandwich. Um, and we're waiting in line for the sandwich outside, of course, because of COVID. And we see this girl, she's turned around, but she's holding this puppy and I can see the puppy's head. And Ben and I are like, wow, that is a cute fucking dog. And then we see the leash and the leash says, adopt me. And I'm like, fuck. I'm like, fuck, there's a dog right here. And I'm waiting for a dog in Thailand. Like, what am I doing? The girl turns around and Ben knows her just from like childhood or whatever. Like not super well, but like they know each other. Her name's Ali. And I'm like, oh my God, this dog is so cute. We barely talked, but I, pet this dog okay so then jump back to now so i tell ben i go okay give me that girl's instagram i'm gonna dm her i'm gonna adopt that dog uh, i saw on the street like i was so naive i thought i could just like be like okay i want it it's mine no i dm her she's so nice and she's like okay go to the rescue which is fetch and release um it's the best rescue ever please use it i'll put it here so i fill out an application for this dog just a little spoiler alert this dog is um She's like, oh my god, apparently there's like tons of applications for this dog, which is another reason why rescuing in COVID is tough because there's so many people who want dogs, which is amazing. That should not steer you away from res rescuing, like never go to a breeder or a puppy mill, whatever. But still, it is a little harder, it takes longer, and you get a lot of heartbreak from not getting the dog that you fall in love with. She's already been picked up. I think there's already an application process, so I'm gutted. I'm like, what do I have to do around here to get a <laughs> like to save a dog. And then I'm going back to filling out that Niagara rescue, the Alberta one, um, all those stuff. This is like the same time period. And then I'm filling out the foster for fetch and release. I'm like, I'm trying everything, all the stops. Oh, she's perfect. I am in bed one night and I get an email from fetch and release and it says, good evening, Annika, confit. It's pronounced confit, you freaking idiot. This dog confit. She has become available for adoption. Are you still interested? And I just burst out crying, like bawling. She was literally my first pick always, always. Cause, cause I met her. So you have a different connection from seeing a photo in like a bio. And when I saw confit at the time, it's confit, confit. Anyways, I was just like, holy shit, this dog is Perfect. So when I got that email, I started bawling. I replied immediately, yes, 150%, yes, 100%, yes. So they contact my references, who I put as um, a couple of my good friends. They contact my vet as a reference. All those went well. So then we moved on to a, it was like a Zoom audio call. It's an interview basically. So they ask you a bunch of questions. Make sure you're not a psychopath. Make sure you're a responsible dog owner. Some of the questions were hard, like training stuff. And you know, what would you do in this type of situation? And it's just truly amazing to see the difference between going to a breeder who's like, oh, do you have four grand? Cool, here's your fucking live animal. Like, have fun. You could be a family of psychopaths. Like, the due diligence and the background checks that rescues do is really admirable, and it's pretty gross that breeders and puppy mills and stuff, they kind of just hand out dogs to anyone. But regardless, um, it was like a 40 minute interview, just chatting, asking me a bunch of questions, and Ben, and then it was a house tour. And then I got approved and everything went well. So I got approved to the next stage, which is a meet and greet. So Ali, the foster mom of Confit at the time, she was away. So she uh, had a babysitter from Fetch and Release. They just put her at like another foster mom. So 
so I just meet, met my girl and I'm like really overwhelmed with like happiness, anxiety. I think it's because I haven't eaten all day because I've been so looking forward to it. Um, but I feel very grateful. I'm so excited to get her. Like I don't know what to do with myself and like she already feels like my daughter. And I like can't express how much I love her. Like I'm so emotional, I can't stop crying. I met up with Lennon, fell in love with her. I was like, yes, 100%. Then they hear back from the meet and greet, the person running the meet and greet, see if you're a good fit. And I got approved, thank God. And then, sorry, my camera stopped recording. You have 72 hours to pay the adoption fee, pick up all the supplies and then pick up your dog. So the supplies are like very specific leashes, collars, um, like a car seat belt for your dog, you know, a tag for the collar, of course, food bed, toys, treats, all that stuff. Um, you have to email them a photo and then you get approved to go pick up your dog, finally. Whew. So, yesterday I picked her up and she was nervous. She was a little spooked, um, but yeah, we finally got her in the car. She doesn't love cars that much. She gets a little nervous. And you know, I just feel bad for her. You can't communicate, you know, this is your forever home. I promise this is it, no more moving. So many people have been taking care of her, but you know, short-term pain, long-term gain. Last moments of life as not dog parents. Nervous. Who am I, huh? Who am I? Who am I? Nanan? You have stinky breath. You have stinky breath. We got to the apartment. She's really scared of stairs, which is so cute. But she's not super light, so carrying her, we have to carry her up the stairs. Every time we take her for a pee, everything, carry her up and down the stairs. And let's go on a tour, okay? So this is the living room. She's, yes, exactly, yes. This is the living room. This is the bedroom. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Come on, Baba. Sit, Lennon. Good girl. She has all these little quirks, but so I'll tell you about her now and her story. She is from Mexico. She was found as a puppy with her siblings in a box. Really, really sad. It's very common, unfortunately, in Mexico for, you know, stray dogs to have puppies and then people put them in a box and dump them and usually they don't make it, but she is a fucking fighter. Mexican rescue uh, found the puppies, thank God, and uh, Fetch and her leash works with uh, a lot of Mexican charities. So they flew her over when she w when it was safe to after she had been treated because they found her and she was starving um, and had a lot of health problems. So once Fetch and her leash got her over here, they treated her for more of her problems and got into her foster home with Allie. She was she's been here since she was still pretty young like three months ago She was five months when she got to Canada and she's eight months now Confi is like the biggest survivor She had parvo then just temper then an eye infection and now demodex Which is something I'm treating for her We've been super focused on boosting her immune system as much as we can because all those illnesses She had were caused by having poor immune system from her rescue circumstances Yeah, she's been through a lot and we're still boosting her immune system. She has some um patches of fur missing like her armpits and her belly and around her eyes from her eye infection but she's literally perfect and her coat's getting shiny yeah so she's been through a lot so Ali took care of her I can't thank this girl enough she's been so sweet I can always ask her questions she gives me so much information it's like actually unreal like I've never been so grateful for someone and for someone who took such good care of her when she was so like fragile. So yeah, her name is Confit. If you guys don't know what Confit means, it means an animal cooked in its own fat. I was like, that is not gonna fly. Like who did that? Like what? What a horrible name. The babysitter was calling her Fifi, which is cute. Um, but yeah, no, I, of course it's gonna change her name and she's young enough that she will learn her name soon. And yeah, I decided on Lennon. She'll also go by like Len and Lenny, but for now I just want it to be Lennon so she gets used to like that name and commands and all that stuff. I love the name. I just thought it was beautiful. There was no really story behind it. I just thought it was really cute and unique and oh uh, well I know some Lennons but it's still not like a basic dog name she's not a basic dog so Allie said this and I completely agree she was like there's something really special about this dog like her vet said he's been a vet for 30 years and never seen such good temper like a temperament in an animal like not like 
like their, her energy and her cuddliness, like it's crazy. She's so well behaved. She'll bark once in a while. She nips a little bit. She's still a puppy, um, but she sits when you ask her to and whenever you have a treat, she'll sit for you. It's really fucking cute. So yeah, I could not have asked for a better dog. Um, we're still, of course, getting to know each other and it'll take a while to have that bond and for her to get used to, you know, the apartment and new everything. And then eventually when she settles in a bit, she will meet my family dog, Pippi. And um, my family's met her a bit. She's great with people, she's great with dogs, but I don't wanna overwhelm her and I wanna know, I want her to know, you know, I'm your mom. This is your home now rather than being confused and being like there's so many people who's who all that stuff so i'm gonna try to keep the social interactions with her to a minimum for a little bit at least and then of course she can socialize all she wants and i'll bring her to my parents house where she'll have a yard all the time i cannot wait to bring her to my cottage as well like oh my goodness she's gonna freaking love it up there especially in the summer maybe she'll be a swimmer It is so important to not shop because there are so many dogs who need homes and I know it's more of a process. I know you might not get the, you know, the dog from when they were fresh out of the fucking womb, but number one, that's unethical. And number two, it's so rewarding to rescue a dog. It is the most rewarding thing I've ever done and I'm not saying I'm morally superior and I'm a fucking hero for rescuing a dog. At the end of the day, Lennon has saved me more than I've saved her, but um, you know, Doing little things for the world is important, and I don't think it should be looked frowned upon to try to be more morally better, like uh, like improve yourself and, and try to do something good. And if you want a doggy, there are even puppies that you can get. Like it's possible. Just please, please don't shop. Uh, most of the dogs that are shopped for end up in shelters because they're given as gifts. Dogs are not gifts; they are children, and you. It's a fucking. 10 to 20 year commitment so yeah it's super super important um to do your research on how unethical even breeders are um i just wanted to introduce you guys to her and explain the whole story about the thailand situation um yeah i yeah it's it was a mess but i realized that everything happens for a reason because i could not imagine my life right now without lennon even though it's been a day i literally can't i can't imagine any other dog like she's perfect so just know that if you're trying to rescue and you're looking and you're getting discouraged, everything happens for a reason and chances are when you finally get that dog, even if they're, you know, a challenge at first, once you get settled, you will probably not be able to imagine your life without them and everything happens for a reason. So keep that in mind. Thank you guys so much for watching. You have no idea how much I appreciate it and appreciate your support and kind messages when I post it on my story that I kind of got her. Um, you've all been so kind in a 2021 goal is to be kind to myself and um, know that I deserve good things to happen to me and you guys do too. I'm like almost numb by how happy I am. It's weird. Like I feel like I'm in a dream a bit. Like I'm kind of like loopy almost. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and I hope you like Lennon and I will see you in my next video. Look at this little mushroom. Little chicken noodle. Can you say bye? Say goodbye. Say goodbye, Noodle. Okay, love you. Goodbye. <laughs>